Hello everybody, welcome to my quick studies guide here on weights, which is something that you can use in a lot of different ways. So I've got a blue lake, a red building, and a yellow pile of junk here for my prompt. And if you notice, I have the colon here and the number after each of these. So we're going to do these with different weights. So the first one, we're just going to have a blue lake at one. Now, another important thing, you can also do negative prompts. You just don't want the values to all add up to zero. Like, I'll just show you here real quick. Like, if I put this as a zero, so all the values are zero, it's going to give us an error when we try to run it. Okay, and there's our error. Okay, so let's go ahead now and put a one here just by the blue lake, and we will run it again here. Okay, and I'll come back when the render is finished. Okay, our render is done here, and we have a very blue lake. That's probably the bluest lake I've ever seen. So the next one we're going to do now is we're going to take away the one from the blue lake. We're going to just change that to a zero, and we're going to add the one to the red building. So you can kind of see what this does here, but I'm going to go ahead and run each of these just so we can see what it looks like, because I also have put the seed in here. And so what that'll do is that, like, if I render the blue lake again, it would look exactly the same. It would look just like this. So just to keep it consistent, I put that seed in there. And now we're going to do the red building. And we will come back and check on it when this render is done. Okay, and our building is now finished. So we have a very plain red building. I, and I didn't pick these to look cool or anything. I just picked these so that they would actually contrast a lot with each other. So we are now going to do a yellow pile of junk, which I've already changed to one. So we're going to go ahead and run this and see what our yellow pile of junk looks like. Okay, and here is our yellow pile of junk. It really did a bad job there. But let's go ahead now. So the reason why I did this is to kind of show you how you can actually use these to kind of fine tune all the elements in your prompt. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to now if you don't put a value there, it will default as one. So this red building here with the one, this is the same thing as just doing that and just putting a red building. But I'm going to go ahead and give each of these a weight now of one. And then we will do the prompt here. So it should be splitting this up between all three equally. So all, all three of these prompts here should have the same amount of their elements in the image. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and our render is winding down here, and you see we just have kind of a coherent mess there because those other prompts were just really not good. But this, So this is just giving every prompt equal say in this one. Each prompt contributes just as much to the final image here because they all are at one. So how these work, it's kind of think of it as a percentage. So our blue lake was the best one. So what we'll do is we're going to do this. We're going to go ahead and give this a weight of 8. And we're going to leave both of these at one. So what this will do is this will give the a blue lake prompt 80% of the contribution towards the final render. And the red building and the yellow pile of junk will just have a 10%. So how Zippy's Disco Diffusion Guide, the original um, guide here, which is a little outdated in some parts, but this part is pretty accurate. Um, so it says that each prompt relative contribution in driving the diffusion direction is its weight divided by the sum of all the weights. So basically, we've got 8, 9, 10. So we've got 8 divided by 10, which will be 0.8. So the blue lake is going to contribute 80% of the image, and the red building and yellow pile of junk, 10% of the image. So let's go ahead and render this one, and we'll come and check on it when it is done. Okay, our image has finished up here, and if you notice, this time it has a sky where our original prompt that was just the blue egg kind of had trees and stuff in the background. So you can get some interesting results sometimes by just using weights and then just turning some parts of the prompt down, that kind of thing. So with this, the way it's set up now, the blue egg will be contributing 60% of the prompt weight, the red building 30%, and the yellow pile of junk 10%. So let's go ahead and do one more render here like this, and we'll come and check on it when it is done. Okay, and our image is wrapping up here, and you can see this is actually probably the most interesting looking image out of all of them. And since we have that seed set, since I'm using that same seed up here every time, it, it the only thing that's changing it is these prompt weights. We're not changing any other settings, just the weight of each of these prompts. And I also want to just point out real quick, to use prompt weights, you also have to have a quote around each section. So I have a blue lake colon six, then a quote, and then a comma, and then a red building, etc. So you could put, you know, you could put a lot of different stuff in here. You could have these a lot longer, a lot more intricate. And we'll go ahead and do one more now. I'll go ahead and turn down the red building to one, and we'll try, we'll give the yellow pile of junk another shot here at contributing something 
meaningful here to the render besides just that ugly yellow screen. And we'll do this one. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do it like this. Okay, one more here, and then I'll show some kind of real world examples of how to kind of use this. Okay, our render is winding down here, and now we've got a lake. It looks just like a water surface with some yellow junk floating on top of it. So that's what's kind of interesting to me about the weights, is it can just drastically change the image just in kind of unexpected ways, because we haven't changed anything but the amounts that each of these are contributing. So with this last one here, it had yellow pile junk 4, uh, lake 6, so it's actually at uh, 11. The total is 11 there, so I went a little bit over 100%. I probably should put that to 3, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, these just think of these as a percentage. So I said I was going to show some real-world examples of how to use this. What I meant by that was kind of how to use weights in like a practical way. Like you can just use it like this to just kind of experiment and change your image. And let me show you what I usually do is I'll usually when I'm doing a prompt, well, let me, let me do this first. So our first lake, if you remember, it had a bunch of trees in it. So let's say you have an element of your image that you don't want. Let's say you hate trees. You're not a tree hugger. You're a tree hater. So we are going to get rid of those trees with this. We're going to do trees, put our weight there, minus one, okay? And we'll put this to two. Now, if we leave this like this, just default, we're going to have a problem because this defaults at one. So we'd have one minus one, which equals zero. So we never want it to equal zero. So I'm going to put a blue lake, two trees minus one. So you can use weights also just to kind of control your image, fine tune it even more, and just get rid of any unwanted elements that might be cropping up based on the images that search and to create your render. So let's go ahead and run this, and we'll check back when it's finished. Okay, render is winding down here. Is that a tree right there? I said no trees. No, I think that's just a rock. Okay, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. But I don't see any really blatantly obvious trees unless the AI tried to sneak a grayscale one back here in the border. So this is a great way if you're entering an image and it, you know, it has clowns in it. And you hate clowns. You didn't want clowns in the image. Just put clowns minus one like I did here with the trees. So that's a good, let me show you also what I usually do. Let me kind of show you one of my setups here and I'm just going to kind of make up a prompt here. So I'll, I'm going to go try and find a good prompt to use and I will be right back. And we'll go ahead and run this. So this is kind of, I set my prompts up like this now quite a bit. That way I have control over each line of the prompt and how much that element is contributing towards the final image. So it's just kind of a good way to fine tune your images. So we'll go ahead and run it and we'll come check on it when it's done here. Okay, and the image is done here and that's a pretty nice looking image. Now what I'm gonna to try to do is try to give it more of the Unreal Engine look. So let's go ahead and crank this on up to four. Okay, and here's our render now. And again, that seed is the same. So the only thing that we changed in this is that prompt weight. But you can see by changing that part, by cranking up that Unreal Engine part, it now looks a lot more like a video game level. You know, it has a lot more kind of a 3D rendered look to it rather than an illustration or a painting, kind of like the last one. So this is how I use prompt weight. So it's a really great, it's a really great um, tool to be knowledgeable about with Disco Diffusion. It lets you really kind of fine tune all of the elements in your image. So thank you for watching and I will be back soon with some more videos and more quick studies.